Okay. Oh, so I was saying yesterday after this first song, I felt like, oh, because I had given blood the day before. And it wasn't too bad, but I felt like I could feel it. But you still should give blood, and I think today I should be good. I hope.
any questions quick? <laughs> I can't listen to that, sorry. I got you. Yes? I've been doing this for almost 30 years. Well, a little less. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I learned in Japan while I taught English on the JET program and then came back here and I miss Taiko so, so much. And raw fish and my family and friends. But um, I was lucky enough that a professor at UNL knew that I played Taiko. And she asked me to teach some students of hers. So they were in her Japanese class. And she wanted us to play for the festival two weeks away. I was like, what? You can't teach someone Taiko in two weeks. And she said, well, one of our people is a drummer, and the other two are from Japan, and they played, thank you, they played uh, when they lived in Japan. So we got together, we practiced every night on cardboard boxes, because we didn't have drums. We actually had to borrow drums from the Kansas City Consulate. Um, now that consulate is closed, but back then they let people borrow them. And we performed that night, and um, I had had like a baby the year before and didn't realize that my stomach muscles weren't the same. We did the seated song. I don't think we're performing that today. It's kind of hard for you to see. But um, like at the end, I had given my all, and I realized I couldn't get back up, so I like rolled over like a rolling pulley. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is bad. But um, people loved it, and so we did it the next year, and then I think the next time, some of my students were like, can we keep drumming? We don't want to end. And I thought, well, we need drums. But what we did is we started charging for performances. We bought one piece of equipment at a time. Some members made the, the die, the stands. We made our own bocce. We had some stuff already just from living in Japan. And we just slowly built up our group that way. And actually, that drummer who joined me for the first first ever performance, he played in many, uh, I don't know what they are, rock bands as a drummer. And he loved Taiko so much, he's like, hey, I got a tattoo of a Taiko. And I thought, oh, that's, that's dedication, really cool. And he showed me, and it was like this huge heart on his heart. But it was like a drum, but it was also like a, a physical heart, like with the ventricles. And it was so cool, and I thought then, Whoa. <laughs> That's really dedicated. That was back then when people didn't get tattoos all the time. And now we have a member, she has a sleeve basically, and uh, one's a cute Totoro, you know. It's really changed my perception of tattoos. Because you know I'm an older person, a little bit old school. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a great question. Thank you. You let me catch my breath? Yeah, thank you. All right, this next piece is called Hidiu, and it means Flying Dragon.
Juchi. So Juchi is very, very important. They have to keep the tempo, the beat. We depend on her. It may look like the easiest part, but it's, it's hard to stay on for a long time. Also, can you say the importance of getting checked? Oh, please, wear sunscreen, and then go to the dermatology and get checked regularly. I had a spot removed this summer, and it turned out to be melanoma. So, you know, they had to go in and take more. And then because it was melanoma, then you have to like start getting checked every three months. So my next three months checkup, voila, they found one on my back. So this Monday I had it again. So I have a scar like that on my back healing right now. So that's why I can't like lift a drum or play the big parts right now. I'm just she made. So please, take care of your skin. <laughs> right. What about taking care of your ears? Yes, we wear ear protection when we when we uh, teach lessons or when we practice. We generally should probably should wear them when we perform too. We just don't. But we also put towels over our drums when we practice or teach lessons. That helps protect the drums. It also protects our body, protects our ears. So yes, protect your ears. And it's you know we always say if it's too loud when we perform. Please, plug your ears. Protect your hearing. It's okay. Yeah. Always keep something on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, in the indigenous people, we have our powwows and our drum ceremonies, but we don't allow pictures. And while you were pre or playing, I was wondering if that was the same for you nope. and your culture. No, nope. nope. we, we allow photos, videos. Um, I don't, I used to not really like having our full videos put on YouTube, especially in the beginning of YouTube. That's how old I am. But anyways, <laughs> because I thought, oh, people will take our songs. But over time, I've learned that we have very unique pieces. Some of them, like Miyake, is around the world. It originated in Japan. It's kind of a public source song now, public domain. I just think. Really, it probably wasn't, but people just took it because it was out there, and Japan isn't very good about it. It's so old, there's not a copyright. It's just been traditionally played for generations. Um, but our songs, a lot of them come from maybe our groups in Japan, and I've had people come up to me and say, oh, we came from California, and you are very, very different. Because California has had a lot of Western influence, maybe jazz, a lot of dance. Um, and as my leader in Japan says, oh, sono taiko motai nai. He says it's such a waste because those songs don't take advantage of the power of taiko. And that's really what drew me to taiko was the power and just that sound that you can hear in your core. Um, I remember when my leader at first, when uh, like three of us foreigner women had joined in, and he thought, oh, it would be so cool if you dressed up in yukata, like this lady here, young lady, the beautiful yukata, and he thought we could dance, and I was like, no. No, I'm, I'm playing the big drums. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dancing. <laughs> so that's, for me, that's really, I love that connection. And for all of us, any indigenous culture, every culture, um, that's the first sound you hear is your mother's heartbeat. You know, if you're adopted, if you're born prematurely, that's the sound you know when you're a baby. So that's, I think that's why every culture has drums. It's pretty primal. So yeah, our next song is Miyake. Kind of sideways lunging. Uh, maybe reminiscent of some martial arts. But it's from the island of Gizu. So it's pulling in fishing nets and very tied to the life that people live in Japan. So thank you for your questions. This is great. You're really thinking. I,
so just, just yeah, time once. I'll do it on here. Yeah, I think. Well, maybe that one. That'll make me work less hard. <laughs> this one's a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to show you really quick. Um, thank you. Oh, I want the really light ones because I'm tired. <laughs> so, oh yes, thank you. A little bit lighter. So these are bachi we use for Yata Bayashi. It's the seated song. Um, I don't know that for you. Yeah, that um, and it's seated because it was performed in portable shrines by only men. Um, and it, they would play this piece all day long, like over and over and over. It takes a lot of strength and stamina. But I talked a little bit about performing this piece, so I thought, oh, you should see it. Um, <laughs> we've just gone one time through them, not over and over, just so you know what it looks like. But um, I know in my group in Japan, only the men used to perform this piece. So I was so happy when he let us women try it out. Um, usually the women just did that. But other thing we did before practicing is we ran, we lifted weights. I remember back in the day when there was only letters, I had written to my friend that, I joined this drumming group, it's so cool. And we lift and we run before we practice. And she wrote back, what, why are you doing that? <laughs> she, she didn't have a concept of taiko, so it's so cool that we can bring it here and you can see what it looks like and feel it um, and even have the chance to play. Um, it's pretty, it's like a dream come true to be able to do something that I love so much. And I'm glad that people just hire us. We do schools, we've done graduations, we've done weddings, including Deb's wedding. <laughs> Imagine her playing in her beautiful dress. Oh, I'm gonna need the low dive for this. Oh, yeah. And we can, so we did one Vietnamese wedding in Lincoln. And after that, we had like tons of bookings. So someone must have saw us and like, oh, we want that at our wedding. But it's always fun because at the Vietnamese weddings, they, they feed us so well, and they always have karaoke at the end. Some of you might know it as karaoke, but it's really pronounced karaoke. And um, it's just a fabulous cultural experience. Um, we've done graduations, we've done outdoor, oh, I'm gonna turn it this way. Outdoor barbecue parties. I don't know, it's, we've had a great time. So if you're interested in us for your school, for whatever, um, just come up and ask us for our contact, or you could also ask Omaha Sister Cities or Lords and Gardens, but we do appreciate them putting on this event every year and having us here yearly, and especially Omaha Sister Cities, they do a lot, a lot of work to put this on, so make sure to thank them, um, be a part of their group if you want, they have connections with other cities around the world, which is really important in this day and age, just to understand each different country and culture, and it helps the history and helps us understand what's happening nowadays in our country and other countries. And that's really critical at this time. So this is Yatai. Uh, so I guess I have to end too. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll try to keep my power throughout. But if you, I'm going to be low. So if you need to stand up and come forward, that's fine. Okay. You understand? <laughs>
I did used to play that like seven, eight times in a row. I, I might die now. <laughs> but that's also because I'm out of shape. So, anyways, our next piece is called uh, Hot Tie and It Means Ocean Wave. No there. So, this is so fun. I love this song. This takes a lot of what kind of I taught the crossover. I hope you can imagine waves crashing on shore with that. You okay? We can do that, Deb. All right. Any other questions? This is our last piece for today. So go ahead. Be great. Yes? So Kodo and Ondeko, actually Ondeko I think is a yeah, the group that made that famous, they ran the Boston Marathon, maybe? Yeah. And then right afterwards, they played. <laughs> like that, they, um, seriously, they practice all day, they play all day. We're just, okay, we're just volunteers um, in various shapes of decay. <laughs> And I say that laughingly, I mean, but this is my way of staying in shape. I don't like going to a gym, I don't like working out, I don't, I just, I really love Tycho. But, oh, we have a kid, yes. When did you start? When did I start? Year. Or what year? <laughs> <laughs> Who put you up to that? <laughs> so, I started playing when I was uh, 25 maybe. <laughs> That's still good. It's like 2000. <laughs> 2011. <laughs> okay, it was like 95, 1995. Before the 2000s. Before internet, basically. Origin of the drumming entertainment or warrior or warfare and religion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why mainly men are the dancers? And how long have they been letting women start on the drum? 50, 60 years or so? Uh, actually, yeah, after World War II, there was a gentleman in Japan who thought, oh, this would be great if we put these drums together and did ensemble style, more for entertainment, not just for utilitarian. And then women got to join. So after World War II, late 40s, early 50s maybe. Um, and now you'll see a lot of just all women groups, which is really cool. And in Japan, it's still, you know, old values and thoughts um, persist. I know when I went to Japan, I stayed with my grandparents. I had a baby then. And our taiko practice was eight to 10. PM, and I'd go out with my baby, and my old bachan told me, you are such a bad mother. <laughs> Taking your baby out at night, you're a woman, you should stay at home. And I'm like, bachan, I'm American. <laughs> so, I think, you know, a lot of attitudes are changing, and um, I, I really love that women can play, and men, and anyone. Um, we just uh, let this summer had a group. I you wanted that one. Yeah, I'm going to be here, though. You're going to be here, though? Yeah. But you wanted that to be your main one. No, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. They, they all kind of, the sound changes. But anyways, different groups, different honoring different peoples. It's really important. Tycho has become pretty inclusive in the U.S. And just the feeling that anyone can drum. Um, and, and, you know, even if you don't have a sense of rhythm, you can still just enjoy it. I might put like 10 layers of towels on your drum <laughs> so you don't mess up everyone else, but it's just the joy of playing. So I hope you enjoy Hakai. Um, Daiju, you're good? All right. Any other last, last questions? I mean, you can always talk to us individually later, like if you're an introvert. I get it. <laughs> Nothing? Okay, let's go.
Jason, thank you for coming. Uh, make sure you tell Asuka and Lawrence how much you appreciate this awesome, awesome two days of Japanese culture. So, thank you very much.